In this video, we're gonna talk about interviewing from two perspectives, one being the interviewer and two being the interviewee. We wanna take both ends of the spectrum to really understand how to be successful on the actual interviewing front, putting your best foot forward, making yourself look as presentable as possible to getting that job. But on the other end, having a really dialed in plan. And both ends of the spectrum really matter. They have a great connectivity to each other to make sure that both are getting the one, the best candidates, and two, the best opportunities. So let's dive into this module we'll talk about interviewing. So this is that transitional step after you've done your internships, you've done your volunteer experiences, you've gotten your education, now you're looking for that proverbial job. Now I'm gonna start off with the person hiring or the interviewer. This is such a important step for you and your staff. Now as I'm looking through the experiences I've had and what I've kind of unwrapped about the interviewing process is your best chance to get quality candidates in the are the people that are already working for you and volunteering for you. You have the best sample of what they're gonna be like in a bunch of different scenarios. One, you know how they're gonna handle stress. Two, you know how they're gonna be able to approach each day. Right, that's a common thread where I get from a lot of stats when I talk to them and I work with them is they weren't as advertised. They didn't follow through with what I expected them to be based off the interview. And is that any surprise? Is that any, anything that was misled you had a one, two day sample to actually really determine this person's ability to help and serve your staff, right? No one knows more about what your staff needs and what you are looking for as a supervisor or a person hiring better than your interns. Just bottom line, you have a better sample of them than you will ever have with the actual people coming in and trying to impress you for a two day period. And I'm looking at that as a spanning out of the phone interview, in-person interview, and then the following debrief. That you're only to get the best version of them. That they're going to present themselves in a way that comes across as, hey, I am going to be the perfect fit for you and your department. I'm going to say the right things. I'm going to check the right boxes. I'm going to make sure that you know that I'm the perfect fit for here. And then it actually gets to the dust settling and you realize that they might have a lot of weird idiosyncratic things that you don't really want to be around, right? That's the hard part most people don't really appreciate about strength conditioning. It's so intimate. It's so involved. It's so much time that you're spending hours upon hours cohabitating in a space. And it might be a 30,000 square foot weight room, but it might as well be a 10 foot square box because you're so on top of each other all the time. You're communicating, you're collaborating, you're sharing racks, you're helping each other, you're breaking down, you're, you're building back up, you're going through con ed, you're going to seminars together. The intimacy of strength conditioning staffs is unparalleled. Now I'm gonna talk about this with finding purpose at the end, but that's the one thing that I most, I'm most surprised about why strength coaches, when they go through a hiring process, is the realization that I'm gonna spend an inordinate amount of time with this person and I'm not putting any kind of, any kind of a semblance to appraising their ability to cohabitate, their ability to get along, their ability to connect, right? Just simply liking the other person, having good people skills, having the ability to communicate and collaborate and showing humility as well as, hey, I have conviction and, and confidence with what I'm doing. I'm gonna be the master of my own domain, but I'm gonna be able to support you in a lot of other ways. That's the part that, as we look through, can you really get that information in a two day period trying to get everyone's best foot forward? That, that to me is what is often overlooked. So if I'm hiring, I'm looking through the Rolodex of people that have interned for me and I'm making an appraisal of whether that person would be a good fit based off the body of work of how they started, how they finished, what were their strengths and weaknesses, what were they doing since, and can they help fill that gap that I have within my department, right? So these like areas that are so glaring, program design, coaching, soft skills like interviewing and motivation and competition, looking at other things like, hey, I need help with sports science or I need help with sports nutrition or I just need help with certain elements of program design like speed or return to play or the traditional strength stuff. All these areas are gonna be things that you can facilitate and get someone with a certain skill set and you know that. You know that what you got with an intern. 
So instead of going through, hey, I'm just going to cold call a bunch of people, or I'm going to just spread the, the word out through my network. Hey, I've got a guy, you got a girl, someone I can get in to play in this role of a hey, strength conditioning coach in my department. And they're only going to say good things, right? If I'm referring someone, it's because they generally have a good relationship with them. So I'm never going to give you the bad stuff. I'm never going to tell you anything else. What I have to gain from giving you someone that's a lemon or someone that doesn't really fit with your staff? Like, I have nothing to gain or lose by saying something of that, especially if we don't have that strong of a relationship and you're just kind of sending me a cold text of like, hey, I was wondering if you have anybody. I wonder if you have anyone in your stable of coaches. And shame on you for not looking internally for the people that you already have. Are you not promoting your assistants to higher levels? Are you not looking to get your interns and GAs and 10-month positions moved up? They're making the great sacrifice. They moved across the country. They've done everything they have, everything you asked them to do. You know exactly what you got with them. You know what they deserve. Give them that opportunity to move up. And it goes back into this idea of education and interning and the point of being selective. Like they were strategic with choosing you because they felt they had the best opportunity to move up as well as get developed and become the best coach. So when you're looking to hiring, now we got to start to say, okay, the the best person's probably already in. And we talk about this in the private sector of the best customer you have want is one you already have. Make that experience for them special and unique every single day. And you'll never have to worry about trying to get as much customers every single day and having this incredible churn, right? And I think too, you should take a look at the churn of your staff. You know, what, what is the process of pe people around? There's good and bad, right? I, I always say I'd rather have someone who's really good for a short period of time than someone who's really bad for a long period of time. Right, the, the adage of hire slow, fire fast. Well, the truth is, there's a lot more complexity to that. Right, there's a lot of money that goes into hiring people. There's a lot of process that goes into that. There's a lot of, uh, a lot of eating your pride of like, I missed the mark. I, got the, I made the wrong decision here. So I'm gonna just sit with this person that I don't think is a good fit from either a personnel, a execution, or just a cohesiveness aspect, but I'm still gonna let them kind of exist here because I don't wanna swallow my pride and tell administration I made a bad hire. We well, already know the person that's interning and volunteering, doing 10 month positions, doing GAs, low level assistant is ready and eager and willing to get that opportunity especially if they're developing themselves. Why wouldn't you want to encourage that, empower that, get that process started from internal as the best person you have is the one you already have. The best person you want is the one you already have. Now, in terms of the interviewing, let's go through this step by step. There's a couple phases to this. And one of the things that I'm looking for when I'm hiring someone is do they have the right prerequisite things? And then two, when I'm getting to the point of I wanna pull the trigger, I need to make sure that everybody that is involved with that process is on board, right? From the staff to the coaches I work with, to administration, sports medicine, sports nutrition, sports, sports science, sports psychology, everyone is on board. They all feel collectively that this person that we're going to bring in is the right fit. And that might seem like a lot of work. That might seem like a lot of things. But what you're thinking about is eventually I'm going to have this person integrated into our ecosystem that they're going to have to assimilate to our environment and make sure that they are working well with others. And then on top of it, they're really facilitating something that we inherently need, right? That whatever it is we weren't good at last year or whatever it is that we didn't have with the previous staff, let's change that course. Let's change that direction. Let's get the right person, the right personnel to make sure that we're always providing the best quality service for our athletes. Now, with all that being said, is maybe there's an opportunity here to get better connectivity to your rest of your, the rest of the athletic department, right? That tumultuous relationship you might have with athletic training or sports nutrition or sports psychology or sports science or even sport coaches. This could be that extending of the olive branch. Like, I really want you to give me some feedback on the right person for this job. And that friction you might have on the other end could go into a whole different direction based off of just simply being more inclusive with the decision-making process. That you're not having your silo and you choose your, the king of your, of your kingdom and you make every decision and no one shall question you or ever involve, get involved with that. I think there's a process there that we can really evaluate saying the more connectivity I want comes to, I got to make the extended effort. And that comes into that both end. Do this person have the skills and then this person have is a good fit? And there's a lot that goes into it. And you can get really married into someone that you really like, right? This, I have 
a preconceived notion that this person's the best fit. And one of the things I always think about is like buying a car. Never tell anyone what color you want or whatever characteristics of that car, like a sunroof, whatever. Because especially if they have a lot, they know they got you. That if you want to buy a car and you're saying you have everything right here, they can essentially manipulate the price to their advantage. If you're saying I'm open, I'm going to shop around, I'm not really going to marry myself to anything, you give yourself a lot of leverage. And that goes for both. You go into the interviewer and then you go into the rest of the people that you're working with. The other aspect of this is as you're kind of giving this process of evaluating strengths and weaknesses and not showing your cards, you're trying to get a really good appraisal of is this person just someone that I just generally like or is this someone that everyone collectively tells me the truth on? That, oh man, I just got the, the wool pulled over me and everyone really sees this person for who they are. And this is something for both the interview and interviewee. You're going in and interviewing for a position. You're shaking hands, you're smiling, you're presentable, you're looking professional. You have this whole thing set up where you can go through that. Where you really want to find is that person that felt marginalized or not included and how that, that interviewer interacted with the person that maybe is not necessarily on their radar as a decision maker. That's, about, that's a probably better actual indicator of who's going to be good or bad on your staff, right? The, the low-level athletic trainer, the, the equipment manager that's no one's really talking to, the other strength coaches that have to share an office with them. All those folks, as they're going through that inner process, what was their vibe check, right? Did they ask them questions? Did they communicate with them? Because they're going to be working a lot with those people. They're going to be in the trenches with those folks every single day, and their feel of them is going to come out like that, right? So what did you think about that person? Did they ask you any questions? Did they get any uh, indication of what the job's going to be like? Did they talk to you about anything, about what you do to get to know you? Because they're going to be working in a very intimate and very intense environment. And we want to know what all of our foot soldiers are going to feel like on a day-to-day, and can they connect, and can they have a cohesive relationship? So as the interviewer, you're trying to get a gauge top to bottom, right? Does the associate AD like them, right? They're going to give their, like, two-second appraisal. Ah, I didn't pass the vibe check. I didn't get a great indication that they could be a good fit, right? They're probably more the eye test, right? How tall they are, how wide they are, how big they are. That's what they're really looking at. And it's crazy, but those stereotypes really exist. Unfortunately so. But that's one appraisal. And they're your, probably your supervisor, and they're probably going to have some sort of thing. They might have a box that they check too, right? They have a specific skill, like, oh, they're certified in functional movement screen, or they're really good at sports science, or they're coming from an organization or program that's really advanced. I like those things. They're going to they're gonna be passing the eye test in a proverbial way. They're the ones who are circulating the lot, looking for that color car, or that type of car that they really want. Not really looking at the quality of the car. Now, in terms of the other rung, the sports scientists, the athletic trainers, the, the low-level assistants, interns, and GAs, the equipment managers, people that are just circulating, making this whole athletic department really operate, what was their take on it? And they're going to ask them questions. They're going to ask them really hard questions. And that person and their ability to handle those questions is going to be a really good indicator of what kind of what kind of person you're getting. right? And you'll see a lot of these interviewers may do their homework, and it's great, and you should. And that's a big part for you is make sure that you're doing your homework. But are they only checking the people on the high rung, the decision makers, so to speak? Are they only looking at the top level? So if I'm interviewing, I'm looking at both ends. I'm looking at who's going to be the decision makers and who's going to influence those decisions. And I want to make sure I make a really good impression on everyone. Simplest thing for you, the person interviewing, is making sure that you're just being nice, gracious, appreciative of the opportunity. And then from there, making sure that you're answering every single question that you're asked as well as trying to get to know the person, regardless of whether they have the perception of being a decision maker or not. When you're watching sessions, making sure that you're having a actual feel for their coaching. Don't don't interrupt, don't ask leading or loaded questions like, why are you doing that? 
probably comes off as a little bit pretentious and a little bit, uh, I guess, challenging. But the other end, it's, hey, I got some downtime here. We're going to walk, get a coffee. I'm going to get to know them. Hey, where are you from? Where'd you coach before? Oh, that's awesome. Don't play the name game. Don't say, I know this person. It's the least becoming thing. It's like close the yearbook. No one loves, no one likes the person that always just name drops. Trust me. It's not as cool as you think it is. Just get to know them. Have an intimacy with getting to know them. Don't try to assess their ability or their skill or their knowledge or their influence by what schools they worked at before. Just don't. It's not as becoming as you think it is. It's not as fast tracking. It basically makes you feel, it makes them feel like you're marginalizing them or putting them in certain hierarchy of decision making. Just be gracious and, and communicate and talk to them like a person because you're going to share an office with them. You're going to have to share the floor with them. You're going to have to communicate. Hey, I'm going to take racks one through six. You take racks seven through 12. You're going to have to connect with them. Hey, I need to run rockets on this day. I'm going to need this on this day. Hey, I can help you out on this one. So you have a team of 50 people and it's just you by yourself. I don't have anything going on. Do you need some help? Hey, let's collaborate. We're going to the seminar together. You want to share a hotel room? All that stuff happens. And those are the folks that you're going to be doing it with. Hey, can I mind if I borrow that book when you're done with it? I really want to read that. Hey, what were some big takeaways? Hey, you notice that you uh, were working on this. Can I jump in with you and do that lift with you? All these things are really great resources for you and a great way to connect with these future, future peers and the best way to fast track you. And one of the other thing that really will come from it is they don't feel like you're stepping over them to take a job. They don't feel like you're coming in there trying to take what's theirs. That you're genuinely and really optimistic about the relationship you're about to develop with them. That you're excited for the opportunity. You're excited for even to be the considered. And we'll go through how to negotiate this here in the next module. So I want to save that here. But there is an element of if everyone is championing you, if everyone's like, dude, that guy is unbelievable. We absolutely need him. When you get that offer letter and you say, hey, I think I'm actually deserving a little bit more, it's going to be a lot harder to go back and say no and have zero leverage if no one liked you. If not from top to bottom, everyone was on, page, on the same page of that's our guy. That is the person we need in here. That if we have everyone collectively going, Tim is the perfect fit for this athletic department. He will fill this need that we have. He's going to get along with everyone. He's going to bring a ton of experience and a ton of insight in terms of our ability to serve our athletes. And when I go, hey, that, that one-year contract for $35,000 is just not good enough. I want to make fifty. dollars and I think I'm deserving of that because of this. And they're going to come back and say, no, we'll offer you 45. And then you say, okay, that's fine. I'll wait. I don't need to go. Like either I'm not going to take a pay cut. I'm not going to move to a higher cost of living area and, and make less. Or I don't need to make that move just yet. And one of the things that's so important what we'll talk about is you only have really small windows. You have very small windows to get more. It's in the beginning or when you have another opportunity. And we'll talk about that in negotiation. But if you're sitting there on the front end of this in your interview and you smoke every aspect of this, phone interview, you're answering your questions, you wear a suit, even if it's on Zoom. You're, you're going through the process of, hey, I'm introducing myself to everyone. I'm smiling. I'm really excited to be here. My body language is positive. I'm not sitting on, during a session. I'm not a mouth breather. I'm not going through these things that just look at like, that guy's not going to be a good fit. Right? They don't have the right stuff. They don't have the right energy. They don't have the right insight. They don't have the right feel. All that stuff is just so important. And when you're breaking it down to the person in front of you, the skills that you have, and you're not coming off in an arrogant and self, a, a self-aggrandizing way, and you come off as like, I have a lot of experience and I have a lot of skill and I'm really appreciative for this opportunity. I think I'd be a really good fit here. But more importantly, I just want you to know that I just genuinely want to work. I want to work hard. I want to support my staff. I want to support my athletes. I want to support this athletic department. I'm not going to compromise my integrity or my values. But at the same time, I'm willing to do the work. I'm willing to put in a hard day's work to make sure that everyone is getting the most from this experience, myself and everyone included. That is the way to think about this. 
And I'm telling you this from both ends. It's, hey, from the interviewer, right, there's a couple tangible things, right? Are they on time? Are they professional? Are they swearing up a storm? Do they have the wrong attitude, right? Do they have the wrong perception? Right, I, I, I'm, I'm past the point of like, oh, they, are, they come from this program, so they're gonna be that. They're gonna be a hit person, they're gonna be a West Side person, they're gonna be that. I don't think that's, I don't think that's something that we can hang our hat on and finding a good employee, because there's plenty of really good coaches in any discipline or, or philosophy. What I do know is if they're disrespectful or unprofessional or in some way not reliable, what you can tell in that small sample, it's not going to get better after you hire them. That the most important impression they're trying to make is in the front end of this and that they're not willing to make that little bit of effort on that. They're not going to make it after you hire them. Now, in terms of the interviewee, very simple. You can screw it up that way, right? You can have typos on your resume. You can show up late in the Zoom call. You can look unprofessional in your actual interview. You can do all those things. And you have no one to blame but yourself, right? That job interview and every step from submitting a resume to submitting or getting involved with a phone interview, in-person interview, follow-up debrief or reference checks, all those stuff. All that stuff has a huge aspect or huge influence on you being able to get the job. And it's all within your control. It's just effort and discipline and attention to detail. But the other things, the intangible aspects, just the, the body language, the persona, the ability to connect with everybody. From the interviewee perspective, your job is to get as much on front of that as possible. Go on the website, look through every single person in the athletic department, try to get a name, detail and try to connect with them as much as possible. But from the interviewer, the folks that you probably see that firsthand with are the folks that volunteer for three months. The folks that are taking a 10 month, no benefit position. The folks that GA for you, the folks that are making pennies on the dollar as your low level assistant. That if you wanna encourage and motivate your staff, and this isn't creating some sort of incestuous closed loop, What this does is empower people to make that transition from one step to the next, to move vertically as opposed to a bunch of horizontal zigzag moves till you get to some sort of point B that is reflective of a salary that you can actually live off of. Like that isn't essentially worth it. I'd rather get a bunch of young, hungry people climbing the ladder who are incentivized and empowered to do a great job every single day because I know them and I know what they're willing to do and I know their strengths and weaknesses. And there's a reflection of me. It's a reflection of me to develop and motivate and encourage our staff. If I want the most for our athletes, why wouldn't I want the most for my staff? That anyone who chooses to volunteer for me, anyone who chooses to work for me, anyone who chooses to stay with me deserves and is the benefactor of everything I got. So from the interviewer perspective, Make sure that you're taking a good, hard look at the people that are already there. And if you have a position where you can make more money, you should be looking at the staff internally. If you have a position where you can give an opportunity to someone who's not making money, you should be trying to giving them that opportunity first and foremost. All right, so a lot of things to unpack here. What I want you to do here at the end of this module, obviously read through the chapter, is go through two things. All the interviews you ever done. Think about what was the outcome of that jo- outcome of that. Did I get the job or did I not? Personally, I can tell you a lot of the mistakes I made on a lot of the interviews I did. And ask yourself, whose fault was that? Did I not get the job or did I not get a part of the system? Or did I not play the game right? On the other end, it's if you've interviewed someone, ask yourself, why did I choose that person? Was it objective? Was it clear? Where did that come to that actual decision of that would be a good fit for my department or staff? So the two really important things, both ends of the spectrum really matter. And having empathy and compassion for both ends, right? There's a lot of stress that goes into hiring people. There's a lot of stress in interviewing people. Both are going to be really challenging in their own way. Not saying that one should have a whole ba- a lot of sensitivity to each experience, but having a little bit more compassion and understanding for each role in that assignment makes all the difference in the world. All right, pause here, read the chapter, get onto that next module. It's gonna be a doozy. 